But I don't even know where to begin to talk about this book because it's amazing, like it, with capital letters and it has everything that I love in a book and some, it was, yeah, it was mind blowing. As we can see, I'm talking about Jade City by Fonda Lee and uh, yeah, it was a winner of the World Fantasy Award in 2018, 98, sorry. And um, yeah, I mean, I had been uh, like reading the first chapters and I was like on the fence because I thought, I don't know, I don't know why I doubted. it. <laughs> so at the end, I decided to go for it because uh, there was something powerful that attracted me to, to the book and to the idea. And I guess that at the beginning, I was afraid that it will be like complicated for me to grasp the concepts and the politics and the world building, but no. It's super easy and it's super well done. I mean, we are going to be into this city, the Jade City, as the title says, and we are going to have like these different clans and the people from the clans uh, extract power from Jade, Jade. And yeah, there's rivalries and there is like, there's lots of things. I don't know where to begin to describe this book and I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to make it justice. But let's say that we are going to be following a family, the Kaun family, and we are going to, uh, it's a very immersive experience in which we are going to be learning about how the clans, families all work and the different positions every person uh, holds inside the families. It's kind of like a mafia style kung fu movie. It's amazing. And also we are going to be described uh, how the city works and how the different classes, politicians, uh, lantern men, bone men, uh, everything. It's amazing. So yeah, going back to the family, um, we are going to meet uh, this character called Lan. Uh, Lan is the, is the pillar of the family. That means like he's like the, in the center of it. And he has the horn. The horn is the one that um, provides like uh, battles and body wars and insurance to the family. And that's the weatherman. The weatherman provides information. It's like the one that moves in the shadows. Not exactly, but so you understand me. So we have Lan and um, he has the power, but he feels like he's under the shadow of his grandfather, who was this very important historical figure. And uh, he's a bit of an ass, the, the grandfather. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, I'm not going to say much. You will have to, le to read to, le to learn what I'm saying that. Uh, but yeah, he's always like very dependent and trying to undermine the brothers. And yeah, because um, the horn plays its uh, uphold by uh, Lance's brother, who's a guy called Hilo. And Hilo, it's very... It's a very complex character also. All the characters are very complex, but uh, he enjoys his position. He enjoys the power he has and he enjoys protecting the people. He is very easy to maybe to enter into a battle, but he's a person that never lies and that you can trust that uh, he's always going to have you back. So the people uh, inside the clan love him and follow him willingly. And then we have the uh, stranded sister who decided that she didn't want to have anything to do with this family because he, she found that it was very male-centered and that you had to really fight very hard as a woman to have the same place that a man will have doing half what she's doing. So yeah, she decides to leave all, everything behind and yeah, she's seen like this lost sheep because obviously she wears jade. Uh, there is like this, uh, in this culture that you are trained to be able to accept jade because it has like different um, outcomes. You, uh, you have to train. It's like when you are doing martial arts that you have to train your body so it can do more things and amazing things that you never knew that you could do. But it's the same with Jade. You have to train since you're very young so your body can accept it because it, it works kind of, it gives you like kind of superpowers, but it also can destroy you because you can become addicted to it and you can end up crazy, uh, whether from with withdrawal or because you are carrying too much jade and, you know, it plays tricks on you and you end up that. So, yeah, they have to build their resistance. And, yeah, for Shai, the sister, 
Yeah, I'm messing this up. Uh, I don't know. Well, this like this family, as I was saying, uh, she uh, decided to strip herself of all her jade, uh, survive the withdrawal, and then leave. But yeah, for things that happen in this book, she comes back and I completely love her and the position she is in. And I love that in this book we have like this male society and we have females uh, trying to to make their place. But it's not like, it's very realistic. It's something that you can believe it will happen. Because in movies or in books you have like, when there's mafia or there's clans, you have women who are in the part of the big team or who are completely oblivious of what's going on, or you have a super female killer. And that's not, I cannot believe that. And we have here females who are fighting harder than the male counterparts, as I said before, to have the same place, and who are offered different choices. We have different females in this book who are going to be finding their own spot, uh, but in different ways. There's uh, females that want to kill everyone, so they are fear and respected. There are females who are going to use their own disadvantages uh, perceived disadvantages uh, to do and to help and to, you know, to find their place. And there are going to be females like Shay that it's going to be thinking if she wants to get back to that family and find her place or if she wants to keep being her own person and having her own victories, uh, whether it's mild compared to what the clan can do. So, yeah, I'm kind of messing this, this book up. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm going to say that you have to read the story. But let's say that uh, what I did love about this book is that it has very powerful characters. All of them are very powerful, powerfully built. And they're like real people. You believe in them and you can see that they all have uh, fears and they all have dreams and they have things that they have to overcome and they have their, their, their own fears, as I say. Yeah, I'm repeating myself. Okay, but what I'm trying to say is that all the characters are so well constructed. I mean, I did fall in love with a character. I'm not going to say their name, but I was completely in love with a character because I fall. Uh, he had... He had, uh, yeah, I wasn't saying they because I didn't want to reveal if it was a male or female, but okay. He, he was a character that had a lot of strength and a lot of weaknesses and his own demons and his own battles. And I was completely in love with that character and I was afraid that um, Fonda Lee was going to make me suffer. Uh, because, you know, I, I was expecting her to put that character under a lot of pressure. Uh, I was surprised, mad, rage, sad when that character died. And I, it was something that I hate and something that I love. I hate that that character had died because I did love him a lot. But also I love that uh, he constructed an amazing character despite the fact that he was going to die. What I'm trying to say is that sometimes you have books uh, in which you have very well-developed characters and you know that they're like untouchable. Nothing is going to happen to them. And then you have like the canon father who are like the half-constructed characters. And you're not as invested in them as you will be their mind characters. And and to have characters here who can be mind characters or not, and knowing that all of them can die, that all choices, all things, all actions have consequences, and sometimes uh, those characters are going to be paying with their lives. I think that it's very powerful in a book because I like when not all of the characters are untouchable because you are, I'm the mind guy, I'm not going to die. I kind of hate that. So yeah. And as to the world building, it's amazing. I love how the Jade City works. I love the inner strata of the city. I love how the population works and uh, how they're, some of them are served to different clans and how the money transactions and the political sides of, of it's amazing. All of it. And yeah, this book has politics, but it's not heavy politics. Uh, really made sense. It, they make sense and they're not convoluted just because you, they want to lose the reader. No, they're very helpful in the way that they are explained to you and you can understand how the society is constructed in the warrior part with the mafia clans and all of that and uh, with the politician side of the city. And uh, yeah, I wanted to say so many good things and the reviews sounded so good in my head and now I'm not so sure that I'm making such a good job with this one because it's a very complex, it's a very heavy book. Um, you can read it in like, yeah, I mean, let me reframe that. I mean, it, it's a heavy book. It's a very well-constructed book. It has an amazing world-building characters, a strata society. 
everything. But it's not a heavy book in the way that you can really read it fast. It's not one of those books that you have to stop and think and remember and what that character did because it's all very, it flows very easy. And it's funny because the other day I was showering and I was thinking about that movie that I saw, that I saw and it was like, what movie was that? And then I realized that I'm... It was this book. <laughs> yeah, because in the way which it's described, everything goes before your eyes, like you're seeing a movie, and that's amazing. And yeah, I cannot wait to see what's going to, help to happen in the second book, Jaguar, because, I mean, yeah, this one was mind-blowing with everything that brought, in, brought into the table, because it also uh, makes you think about drug addiction, it makes you think about power imbalance, it makes you think about uh, having people... Um, separate from the rest. It also makes you think about racism because different clans, uh, not, not the clans per se, but the clans are thriving with the jade, um, but there is other people like Asperians who want to profit from what these people have and they are using their own services of intelligence and things, you know, to export it. And then how they're not trying to, to use that. They have to resort to drugs. And uh, yeah, it has a lot of plots and subplots and things that uh, it's amazing. And as I said, one of the things that I love a lot, it's how believable the uh, females in this book are because they are not powerful killing machines or they are not sobbing themselves in distress. They are amazing girls who exploit whatever they have at hand and whatever they can work with, their brains or the bodies, whatever, their strengths and their fears and everything. I mean, I love how well-rounded they are. And yeah, just pick this up. Um, if my review seems confusing or something, just read the first chapters of the book and you're going to love it. And yeah, pick this one up because it's amazing. So yeah, thank you for watching. Bye.